So let us uh, have a discussion on design of columns. So in design of columns, the first problem that is model number one. So the question pattern will be like this. So the first question, determine the design compressive strength of an I section in brackets that is ISLB which means Indian standard light beam or ISMB Indian standard medium beam or ISHB Indian standard heavy beam. So anything can be given in a question either ISLB or MB or HP of HMM at the rate P Newton meter where H indicates the depth of the I section where P indicates the weight when it is used as a column of an effective length of L meters. So in this question directly the effective length is given. So in exam you may also get the direct original length. So that original length you have to convert into effective length when the yield stress of the material is given Fi. So in model number 1, so what is the first question? Determine the design compressive strength of an I section where HMM at the rate P Newton meter when it is used as a column of an effective length of L meters when the yield stress of the material is given. So in model number 1, so what is the first step? Step number 1 that is given data. So this is the first and foremost step in order to solve any question from our chapter 4. The first one is area of this section A units are mm square. Next depth of the section which is designated, designated as H units are mm width of the flange whose units are mm thickness of the flange next thickness of the web next radius of gyration in zz direction whose units are also in mm and radius of gyration in y direction again units are mm. So these are the steps that we have to write in the given data. If length is also given original length also we should also include in the given data. If any data is given we must also include in the given data for example yield stress, length etc. So based upon type of end conditions we have to solve for effective length. So in this model effective length is not given sorry the end conditions are not given. So if directly effective length is given no need of finding any condition no need of uh, solving for uh, effective length by multiplying constant with original length. In those case when original length or length is given how to find effective length. So based upon conditions we have to solve effective length is equal to constant is multiplied to original length. So how we are going to get this constant value? So by this we will able to find the effective length based upon above values obtained. For this we need to refer IS 800 2007 table number 11 page number 45. In this table number 11 the completely right side right hand side on the picture near to that you are going to see some values like 2.0 is multiplied to L. 1.0 is multiplied to L, 1.2 is multiplied to L. So these are the conditions, boundary conditions. One is fixed, other end is free, one end is hinge, other end is roller, both the ends are hinge, etc. In the left hand, hand side, you will be seeing boundary conditions at one end and at another end. At one end, again we are going to have two cases that is translation and rotation. Even at other end, we are going to have translation and rotation. So based upon the boundary conditions, which are discussed we need to solve effective length. So these constant values we are going to get based upon this schematic representation of boundary conditions from table number 11 page number 45. So step number 3. So what is our step number 3? It is nothing but depth to width ratio or it is a ratio of depth by width. So here H represents depth, BF represents width of the I section. So based upon this we are going to solve the classification of a section C. By this we will be able to find depth by width ratio based upon above ratios. For this we need to refer IS 800 2007 table number 10 page number 44. 
see the first table indicates cross section the second table indicates limits the third row indicates buckling class in direction the last row indicates buckling class for example let us consider a rolled i section it's a cross section whose depth is of h mm the thickness of the flange is tf the width of the flange is b sub x f the thickness of the web is tw so in limits the second col second column or second row you will find h by bf is greater than 1.2 in which direction in buckling direction of zz then it becomes class a immediate to that the next formula is tf is greater than 40 mm in which direction in y y direction it belongs to class b so by using this table number 10 we can classify any section as class a or class b or class c or class d for example again in limits for i section there are two two boxes the first box is not satisfied you have to go for second one if the width by sorry the depth by width ratio is less than 1.2 in zz direction the buckling class is b the thickness is less than 100 mm in the yy direction the buckling class of the i section is c if our thickness given thickness is greater than 100 for example it is 110 the buckling direction is yy then it becomes class d so based upon this we have to classify the buckling class for example if it is halo section or any section directly it is when it is cold rolled it becomes a cold deform it is b general it is b for channel remember for channel section for t section for built up section the buckling class is c so for channels for angles for t and solid section and also built up section directly we have to uh, write the buckling class is c no need of writing any either a or b or c d it is directly you have to go for c that's it for i section for welded section we have to solve this uh, depth by width ratio but we should not solve for channels angles t solids and built up section so this table number 10 from page number 44 is very important in order to classify section that is buckling class step number 4 that is effective slenderness ratio so in the first step we have seen two radius of gyration that is in zz direction in yy direction as we are going to have two radius of gyrations again effective slenderness ratio we are going to have two that is the general formula of effective slenderness ratio is the effective length divided by radius of gyration so the first one is effective length is divided by radius of gyration in zz direction the second one is effective length divided by radius of gyration in yy direction so in effective slenderness ratio we are going to have two cases so step number 5 so what is our step number 5 that is design compressive stress so based upon buckling class classification we need to find design compressive stress by using is 800 2007 code book table number 9 so again in table number 9 we are going to have four four tables if the section is a we need to refer 9a of page number 40 if the section is class b we need to refer table number 9b of page number 41 if the section is class c we need to refer table number 9c page number 42 if the section is class d we need to refer table number 9d page number 43 so how we're going to classify section either class a or class b or class c or class d it's nothing but very simple based upon depth to width ratio you have seen a table number 10 page number 44 by this we are going to classify a section whether it is class a or b or c or d if it is a we need to refer 9a page number 40 if it is b we need to refer 9b page number 41 if it is c 9c page number 42 the section is class d table number 9d page number 43 so as we are having two slenderness ratio that is zz and yy so we are going to get two compressive stresses so for this we need to calculate 
based upon the relation between yield stress and slenderness ratio. We need to solve for compressive stress by method of interpolation. So, for example, we got a class A. For example, we got class C, which table number we have to refer table number 90, page number 40. So, the first row that indicates K L by R, where the arrow is indicating towards downside, which indicate which means that is slenderness ratio. This slenderness ratio, the value starts from 10, 20, 30, so on up to 2 for so on up to 250, etc. On the right hand side, the yield stress. So, immediately into the next column of uh, slenderness ratio, we are going to see yield stress, which is the arrow is indicating towards the right side. So, the yield stress values starts from 200 MPA, that is 210, 220, 230, 240, so on up to 540. So, the slenderness ratio is down downwards and the yield stress towards right side. So, based upon the relation between slenderness ratio and yield stress, we are going to solve design compressive stress by using interpolation method. Interpolation method. So, for example, if in z direction we are going to have FCD that is compressive stress, in y direction we are going to have another compressive stress. So, you may get doubt. So, we are going to have two compressive stresses, which compressive stress we need to use in solving design compressive strength. So, for example, the first compressive stress is in z direction, the second one is in y direction. Forget about this z and y direction, these are the values which are obtained from class A or class B or class C or class D, any class. We are going to get two compressive stresses. Among these two compressive stresses, whichever the value is lesser, that value we have to use as compressive stress. So, the lesser among these two, we are going to use compressive stress, the units are Newton per mm square. Last step in our model number 1 that is step number 6 design of compressive strength. So, guys do not get confused between step number 5 and step number 6. Step number 6 is to find design compressive strength whose value or it is designated as P sub x d, P stands for compressive strength, D stands for design whereas step number 5 is design compressive stress that is stress and 6 step number 6 is compressive strength. So, what is the formula for design compressive strength is equal to compressive stress FCD is multiplied with area of this section. 